All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know their content, you know their names. But in this series, I'm going to ask them about how they got started. Join me as we find out more about your favorite stackers and collectors. Today, we're honored to have Salivate Metal with us. Welcome, Sal. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So before we begin and we start asking uh, some of the questions, can you tell me a little bit about your channel and what your channel is designed to do? Well, the channel has kind of evolved over the years. I started actually as of the recording of this broadcast. Um, it's almost just under 10 years old now. And it started out uh, when unboxings were all the rage. And a lot of the unboxings had to do with stackable silver, mostly. Silver uh, unboxings were, um, were is known, pardon the crude phrasing, but it was a time when the uh, word silver porn was used. In other words, people love to see the silver, love to see the shiny. And so uh, is that kind of how it started. And in the midst of that, I would have a little commentary and talk about stacking and strategies and what I was doing. And, and it kind of had evolved into, as the channel grew, just discussing uh, anything related to precious metals um, and how to be fiscally responsible, how to stack on a budget and that type of thing. And it just kind of grew from there. But in the midst of all this, starting out as a stacking channel, um, and by the way, that term, and I've done a video about the term stacking, started really and became popularized uh, from this community, really. Um, it, it was a term that was used to some extent back there in the 2011 price uh, crazy jumps with silver and the like. But nonetheless, that's kind of where it started. But I am a collector at heart, for sure, and it shows in many of my videos. But uh, it has kind of evolved, but mostly it is uh, centered around precious metals, although I do other metals as well, rare metals, uh, base metals, hence the name Salivate Metal. I love precious metals and I love heavy metal. I love dense, thick, heavy metal, both, both in music form and also in pure solid metal form. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I think anybody that's ever seen your intro knows that you're a fan of metal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so one thing that I appreciate about your channel, and I, I'm fairly new to your channel. I've only been doing this a few months, whereas you've been doing it for years. Um, the one thing I love about your channel is the fact that you really do research and help inform people of what's going on in the market, how it's happening, where they're at. Um, making smart decisions, you know, staying within your means, but don't react. You know, you, you're, you're constantly talking about staying within your plan and not having this emotional reaction to what's happening to uh, things out, out there in the public sector. So I really appreciate that. Well, it's, it's my honor. And uh, yeah, it's, been doing it for a while and it there fomo is a real thing that can be uh, a problem it's a temptation for us all um and that's a fear of missing out um and it can happen to collectors as well as stackers and so it's something that you have to sort of fight against and just try to stay true north and your goals uh, because if you you can certainly break the bank and try to accumulate all the gold and silver you want, but you're going into debt to do so kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, exactly. Because in the long run, you're going to be paying more for it, having to pay those interest rates back. Exactly. Not, not only that, but also the, the high premiums that we're seeing, or we, we have been seeing, they're starting to come down somewhat now, but you know, that's another factor that people have to take into account when they buy precious metals. Right. Well, you you said you've been doing this for about eleven years. So I need to ask, how did you get started? What was your what was your interest? What was the catalyst that got you into uh, collecting, stacking, things of that nature? It all started a long time ago in a land far away. <laughs> uh, uh, it was actually my grandfather who got me interested in coins. Nice. Um, he handed me a cleaned 1906 uh, Indian head scent. And I thought that was just the most amazing thing ever. Cleaned 
1906 Indian headset. You don't do that, but that's what got right. me in. It was the shiny 1906 Indian headset, and uh, that I was just thought it was the most beautiful thing ever. So who would have thought that a clean coin would have got me in the, into coin collecting? You know, you don't, you know, you, there's ways to clean and there's ways to conserve. I think you've done a video about that, but but there's there there is that, and that's what really got me into it. And the coin shop near where he lived, um, it was maybe maybe two, three, four years after that, I saw a Johnson Mathay one ounce silver bar in there for four bucks. And I'm like, that is just so cool. It's a bar of silver. Wow. And that just lit me up, you know, the, the shine of it, the fact that it wasn't a coin. I was used to seeing silver coins. Well, you know, that's kind of out of my range, you know, some of these collectible silver coins. But this was a silver bar for not too expensive. It was pretty cheap. And uh, so that was my first stackable silver. And you know what? I loved it, not necessarily because it was a stacker piece, but because it was just neat looking. And I tell you what, that's something that, that that's the reason why I still buy today. There's a lot of the pieces that some of the stackable pieces I buy because I think they look cool. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. I just uh, purchased one of the uh, Grim Reaper coins. Right. And, you know, people are like, man, that's you spent way too much money for a one-ounce silver coin. And I'm like, well, there's, there's stacking for security, right? Something was to happen. But then there's the collectible side. And I don't mind paying it if, if it's something that I'm collecting uh, because I really enjoy that look. I really enjoy that feel. I look at that coin. I look at the high relief on it. I look at the way it glistens in the light. And it just there's something about the captivation that it does that I absolutely just love. And you've just nailed it right there. A lot of people think, well, you'll never get your money back out of these collectible coins. And you're right. I don't want my money back out of them. I, I, I bought them to keep them and to enjoy them and to admire them. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep just regular silver bars to uh, trade back and forth or, you know, stack up to trade in for silver or gold. Excuse me. I'm not right. going to be utilizing this uh, this beautiful high relief coin. That's that's mine. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Yep. So you said that you, the silver bar was the thing that really kind of caught the catalyst. Can you talk a little bit more about how it made you feel? Like, I, I know that, you know, people see something, oh, it's really cool. And then they don't do anything with it. What was it about that bar that just went, I need to do this? Well, I saw it and I'm like, you know what? It would be neat to have another one to put on top of it in a sense, to stack it up before the term really became popularized. You know, that was that was something that I thought was kind of cool. You hear about treasure and people, you know, uh, hoarding treasure and the like. And I thought it was a neat novel concept to have, uh, you know, to have this uh, notion of having multiple bars of different sizes. And I started getting the Inglehard five ounce uh, loaves and 10 ounce loaves at a local um, coin shop close to me. And I uh, started buying those um, at around, you know, $5 an ounce and stacking those up. And then I remember questioning myself, you know, here I'm doing this, but what for? What's the reason? I wrestled with this. Okay, I've got enough of these, but it really seems kind of silly because I don't know that silver is going to really do anything price-wise. It was during the, um, during the 90s and, and mid-2000s, it was not much activity happening with silver. It was kind of low and just kind of hang around that price point uh, with some exceptions for 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 quite a while and uh it was just like and then i thought well maybe i should think about gold i did get a little bit of gold through that time but for for many years i questioned the uh the sanity of doing it you know was it was it uh and so i come to the conclusion that you know what silver used to be used in our money um, whenever you find a silver quarter or a silver half dollar. I found one in change when I was working in retail at one point in time, a silver half dollar. I was like, you know what? There's a reason why silver's not in our change anymore. And that was what triggered it to me. That was the catalyst going back to silver coins and realizing, you know what? 
uh, you know, these constitutional silver coins or these coins minted before 1965, you know, people are collecting those and they're doing it because silver is valuable and it's valuable beyond the price that the markets say they are at any given point in time. Right. And, and so that's what really cemented my, um, my strategy and my um, intuition to continue to stack. So do you only stack silver and gold or do you still collect, do you collect coins as well? I still collect coins, although I made a very big announcement video uh, late last year. Uh, the cornerstone of my collecting is the proof modern commemorative coins that the United States Mint made from 1982 to 2022. I have all the proof versions and every mint mark available, and I stopped it last year. Of course, uh, I did that knowing, well, I did that not knowing uh, that uh, in 2023, there will be no no proof commemorative or no commemorative coins for the United States Mint because the legislation is stuck in committee, which is highly unusual. I did a video about that as well, too. It's the first time since 1985 that they stopped, but I stopped because I'm a completist and I like to have I like to have everything up to date and complete. And, and of course, you're at the mercy of Congress and legislation. And no matter what designs come out, even if you hate the designs, you got to get them to keep the complexion to keep the uh, collection complete. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that anymore because there's so many coins in that series that I don't like the look of horrible designs, you know, or a theme that just doesn't interest me. And so I decided to stop that. Um, and, but I still do collect, uh, coins that I just find attractive, uh, not necessarily. There's some little series that I've done. I've completed like the Queens B series is a fun, that's a bullion coin series, but, uh, it's still collectible. Um, and there's others, I've got some nice one-off examples of some other coins, but, um, largely other than a few short sets, um, that's about all I do as far as collecting. That's really cool. And you know, again, just a moment ago, we talked about you really have to enjoy or like the item, right? Now, you can collect just because you have the entire set. But if you're really happy about what you're what you're keeping, it's really hard to continue on. So I fully understand that. If, but if I was to ask, out of all the acquisitions that you've done over the years, what's what's your favorite? What is the one that if you were to look at your entire stack, what's the one you always go to? It's probably going to be the 2009 Ultra High Relief Gold Double Eagle, which was championed by former Mint director Edmund C. Moy um, to revitalize uh, Augusta St. Gaudens' original dream for the uh, $20 gold piece. It's considered one of the most beautiful coins in the world, even not in high relief. But uh, this ultra high relief coin is just amazing. It doesn't have particularly high numismatic value, although it is certainly going for way above spot price now. They minted, I think, over 100,000 of these, 165,000 if memory serves. But it's just a beautiful coin, and the packaging is exquisite. A um, little bulky packaging, but still, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful coin. That's the coin I like to get out and admire semi-frequently, actually. Um, it just is, it's probably my favorite, but there's so many other nice coins that I, that I enjoy in the, in the collection as well, too. I love the, um, I, I love the wedge-tailed eagle, um, designed from 2014 and 2015 by John McCanty. That's a modern coin. These are modern coins I'm talking about, but I like some of the classic ones, too. I mean, I do like a nice St. Gons. I like a very nice Morgan dollar. I love pristine, crisp, sharp. Morgan dollars. I have a, right. a roll of 1880s that I mean, are they're not proof like, but uh, boy, they're pretty darn close. Yeah, I think I have I have two coins that I look at from time to time. Uh, actually, one's a coin and one's a silver bar. So, uh, Constitutional Stacker had uh, was it Constitutional. I think it was. He had an, it's an Argentinian lady. It's a 10 ounce bar. Yes. And I saw that thing and I was like, I've got to have that. It was just a good looking, you know, just one of those things where it's like, I've got to do it. Yeah. 
Wait. I've seen it. And it, it is beautiful. I'd love to have that one as well. That's cool. So you ended up getting one? I did. I did. And nice. it, it, it's just one of those where I'll pull it out every once in a while and go, you know, I love craftsmanship. And to be able to do some of these things, uh, to be able to look at the craftsmanship that goes into these coins or that goes into these bars, I just sit there and stare at it and go, you know, amazing talent. Oh, yes. It, it is. It's so cool. And I don't <clears throat> I can't draw a stick figure. So to see these people that can do this kind of uh, design, it just it boggles my mind. So I always appreciate that. But the one that really the one that I always look at and it's it's old and it's beat up, but it's the first one that I ever got which is the coin that got me into it, which is an 1873 uh, seated half dollar. Nice. And that was, and again, talking about grandparents, that was the coin where my granddad said, are you, do you really want to do this? And it's like, yeah. And he's like, choose one. And I was like, well, I want to choose something that was a hundred years old when I was born. And so we looked and we looked and we looked and we found that coin and it was the first purchase we did, basically the only purchase that we did together. And so, you know, I look at that and go, because every time I look at that, it reminds me of my granddad. It's, it, it means more to me than just the coin. Um, so do you have, do you have a coin? I mean, obviously we're talking about the 1906, which is kind of funny because the coin that I'm restoring for my daughter was the 1906 penny. Nice. A little bit of ironic uh, touch there. Right. But is there is there one thing that reminds you, like if you look through your stack or you look through your collection, is there one thing that reminds you more specifically than not of your grandfather? Um, I guess it would be the Indian head scent. That is the one that just really sticks out that um, um, every time I see that design, I think of my grandfather. You know, it's a... It, it's it's interesting. He has Irish blood in him, um, but he looked almost native. Um, he really, really dark skin, tanned skin, and uh, old, uh, very weathered looking feller. And um, so, I would say the Indian head scent really is the only one. My my uh, rest of my family really did not collect. My other grandfather um, had as investment. Um, some some coins and actually when he passed I ended up getting a St. Gaughan's graded uh, 1908 Nomato nice. um, um, MS65 PCGS from his estate uh, but nonetheless yeah it's but that that's pretty much it you know it's amazing because there is this human connection right there's this human connection for all of us whether we want to admit it or not even if it's just stacking somebody somewhere you heard about it from someone even if it's from a random video on youtube or an article uh, a human wrote that article um you know or you know there's there's going to be a human connection throughout all throughout our journeys and i'm still growing and i'm learning a lot from the community and and good folks like yourself i mean you know if you're just starting you've done some great content um uh, about coins and collecting and and uh and and precious metals so you know it's amazing there's a wealth of information out there people absorb it and reconstitute the information as you have done in a very effective manner so you've got a lot to be proud of here with the frostbite channel i appreciate that so it means a lot coming from you uh we talk about uh you know trying to to model after people who really want to build community and the reason that I got started was because, you know, I don't have a huge community here where I'm at. And so I wanted to plug into people and do something that I enjoy with people who have the same like mind. And so it's really good to be able to plug into a community like this and have people come alongside and talk with you. So your, your praise is extremely appreciated. Um, and I'll do everything I can to continue providing great content and, uh, pushing that forward. Well, great. That's awesome. So the last thing I'd like to ask you is if there was one thing, like only one thing that you could impart either to yourself 
in today's, and I don't mean 30 years ago or 40 years ago, in today's environment, if there was one piece of wisdom that you could impart to somebody, whether it be a, a, a 50 year old collector or whether it be a you know 20 year old brand new uh, coming up, trying to figure out how to collect or how to stack, what would you say would be the greatest piece of advice that you could give to somebody? You know, I've thought about this and I've got a lot of collectible coins, just one offs. In other words, things are just, I, hey, this is cool, gonna buy it. Whether it be a local coin shop before the internet really became a thing or uh, whether it be at a coin show or online. I've got a lot, a lot of base metal coins uh, or in metals and things like that. That's like, okay, neat. Got to have it. Going to gonna buy it. it this, thing, this thing could be two or three bucks, right? And then I've sto stored away and I never look at it again. Uh, I'm going through and reorganizing some things right now. I'm finding some stuff. It's like, whoa, I forgot I had that. This is cool, but do I really need it? I've, I've gone 20 years without looking at it. So I would be, I would advise folks to start, if they're starting to collect, and I'm talking to basically collectors out there that don't really have a set goal as to what they want to focus on, is to find a focus. Number one, find a focus on what you want to collect, whether it be a series like Sea of Liberty Quarters or what have you, or, or uh, Barber Halves, you know, or, or whatever you're interested in. If you like foreign stuff, you know, do you want to collect from a certain country? Do you want to collect by a theme? You know, do you want to find all the coins that have maybe roses on the reverse or birds? You know, uh, how do you want to collect? What are you really interested in? Um, find that focus. Don't be like a squirrel and just go to the next thing and make sure that whatever you do buy, it's something that you're going to really enjoy and maybe look at uh, from time to time um, um, and often. I've got a whole ammo can full of foreign coins in here that is voluminous. It is just massive. And they're all coins that are worth next to nothing. But I bought them because they look cool. You know, I mean, I buy, I don't care what the metal, I mean, I'm not big in aluminum coins. I like heavy metal, not light metal. Plus aluminum, you know, you touch it, it gets res residue on your fingers and the like. But, um, but I would just say focus and when you buy, buy to keep and, and enjoy. If you're a flipper, you're not really a collector on, on some level unless you're buying multiples and then reselling the uh, reselling the extra ones you have. Some people do that and that's fine. So you can be a collector flipper or what have you. But uh, I would say if you're a collector, be focused. Uh, find out what you like and focus on that. That's a good piece of advice because, again, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the, what did you call that? Um, fear of missing out FOMO? Yeah, fear of missing out, yep. Yeah. Right. Just, oh man, they're talking about this coin. I need it. They're talking about this coin. I need it. They're talking about this. I need it. And then what happens is you end up with a whole bunch of stuff that's only partially done. Right. Well, Sal, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Salivate Metal. Uh, we appreciate it. Looking for more great content. If you aren't a member already, you haven't subscribed to his channel, uh, his channel will be in the description below. Please go check him out. He's got some great commentary. And if you ever want to see him railroad a spammer, <laughs> uh, it'll bring a smile to your face. I actually, so I wasn't channel. sure if you were aware of, of me doing that. I rejected a scammer call as we were doing this interview. I, I probably should have taken it now. We could have had some fun with him. Oh, yeah. I listened to this the other day when you were doing the live. Oh, I laughed so hard. You know, I, uh, what were you talking about? You were talking about, um, you had an idea for silver suppository, maybe? <laughs> no, uh, gold leaf in your coffee. Oh, gold leaf in the gold coffee. Yeah, the there coffee. you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, just laughed because, I mean, it's like you, you're so knowledgeable on things that you can just play it off and just go. Um, I think we got, there were like two calls in that last uh, live uh, event that you did that you, you took just absolutely hilarious. I absolutely loved it. 
I'm glad you enjoy. We got to have a little bit of fun. The, the the live streams are a little more laid back. We 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 goof around a lot and uh, and and just have a little bit of fun. So yes, indeed. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed and and thank you. It's been an honor. I appreciate you having me on. This has been a great discussion. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all you do um, with the community. You've, you're you're I know you're a young channel, but I tell you what, you've taken off by storm with some great information uh, in your videos. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sal. I appreciate it. Everybody have a good day. Take care and keep stacking.